Welcome. Welcome to some robotics fun. I'm Yvonne and I'm from the Central Coast Library Service. Today we are going to imagine, imagine. Design, design, create, create. Tinker. tinker, try again and have loads of fun and we are going to make some wiggle bots. So are you ready? Let's get started. First thing you need is a clear working space. So if you're using the kitchen or dining room table, promise that you'll clear up after yourself. But let's get this clear. Then you'll need your Wigglebot pack that you've collected from the branch that you selected when you registered on Eventbrite. Then you'll need a few things that you possibly have at home in your recycling bin. So you might, you've might you got to think about what you might use it for. It's going to be for the body. So you might find some old coffee cups, cylinders. I've got an old matchbox. Uh, I found some old um, sticky tape rings. What else have I got? Another little container that would have had fruit in it. And even, I'm not sure, but maybe I could even use these bread tie things. I don't know. So make sure you've got a whole pile of things to select from. You might even find some other things like maybe some old discs, uh, maybe there's some cotton reels um, or some paddle pop sticks or old plastic spoons, things like that. Just grab a whole pile of things, then you can be creative and be ready. You'll also need some sort of tape. Could be some sticky tape, you might have some masking tape, whatever you've got. This is something that we use when we do some painting, a bit of electrical tape, or also something that you love to draw with. So some textures, some pencils, a pair of scissors might be handy, maybe a couple of thick textures, because you never know, your wiggle bot might turn into a scribble bot. So some of those as well. Okay, so let's see what's in your Wigglebot pack. All right, so you've got your pack. You should have three sets of notes. There'll be one about a go-to guide, um, an engineering notebook one, and um, some information about electricity. So you can have a look at those a little bit. But let's see what else we've got. We've got some dowel. So we've got a couple of long pieces, 30 centimetre pieces, a couple of 15 centimetre pieces, and then another one two smaller pieces. We've got two pieces of wire that's quite bendable. We've got a battery case. We've got four cogs. We've got our motor and it has some leads attached to it. We've got a battery case and what am I missing? A battery. So you'll have a battery in your pack as well. So let's start off running the motor. Okay, so we don't need a lot of these bits. Let's push them aside. So we need to connect the battery into the uh, battery casing. So you want to put, I wonder if you can figure out which way you do it. Yep, the flat end to the spring. So that's the negative side, isn't it? And the positive end the other way. Okay, so just be aware, safety, that this has got a little bit at the end and it will spin and whatever you attach to it will spin around as well, either in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So just be careful. So we've got these little clips here and when we connect, Let's see, this will spin. I'm, I'm actually going to put a little cog on the end of that so you can see it spinning. I wouldn't press it on too hard because we're going to take that off after. Okay, so let's see. It's a bit fiddly. Can you see it spinning around? Okay, you don't want it to touch the wires if you can help it, otherwise it'll cut into it. So you might want to just bend those wires down a little bit. Here we go again. You can hear the motor going, can't you? And how does your battery work? Do you know? Well, you've got a build-up of electrons on one side, on the negative side, and they want to get to the other side. To get to the other side, they need to, we need to make a circuit, a connection. Let's see if we can get that to happen again. Okay, so this is the way it's going. That's our electricity. So we've got our motor, we've got our battery source, and we've got the pathways, which are the cables. I'm gonna put a slightly bigger cog on. 
There was one other thing I forgot to mention that perhaps would be good, and that is a bit of soap. If you rub a bit on the dowel, it'll make it a little bit easier to slip in. And you'll notice when you look in the cogs too, in these little holes, that there's some little ridges. All right, so you don't want to twist it when you pop it in, just try and pop it in. All right, let's make our connections. Oops. Remember that when you make your connection, everything spins. Okay, so this bit just flew off. I didn't have it hard enough, pressed in there hard enough. So you don't want to be sitting too close over it. Now, I don't know whether you could see then which direction it was spinning in, but I wonder if you know what would make it spin in the opposite direction. I wonder if I'd leave that for you to have a think about. Remember, there's lots of tinkering. We've made it spin. How about we try and make it vibrate? I'm going to use this um, little sticky tape roll just to help me keep the motor still for the moment. I'm just leaning it against it. And I'm going to pop in a little piece of dowel. And I've rubbed a little bit of soap on it just to make it slip in a little bit easier. We don't want it to fly out, so push it in a bit. Okay, we don't want it to fly out, so we're going to put that there. And then we're going to connect the little alligator clips. They're a bit fiddly. Put that on one end, and we want it to make a connection with this little silver contact there. Okay, nothing happening. There it is. So there was something that wasn't quite making the connection. So all we've got to do is just check that your alligator clips are clipping in and making contact. Okay, so you can see it's kind of wobbling. Remember, there's no on off button, so you've got to actually disconnect the alligator clip so that you can stop it. You notice that I've got this bit here. Now it's not in the middle, is it? It's to the side. So we've got this kind of unbalanced. If that had um, a post in the middle, it would actually be balanced and it would just spin around and around. Because it's off to the side, it makes it wobble because it's unbalanced. So before you start building your Wigglebot, let's have a look at the design process. These are some things to think about while you're planning and creating. So we've got to ask the question, first of all, what are we making? We want to make something that wiggles, okay. What are the constraints? They're the things that are limited. We've got limited resources and we've got limited time and space. Then you've got to imagine. So what do you want to do? What would you love to do? Maybe you could write down on your um, engineering notepad that I put in your pack. You could put down drawings of what you imagine you'd like to make. Then you can plan. What do you need? Brainstorm. Think about what is it that you're going to do? What bits will you need? Then you're going to start creating. Okay, so building it, and then you're going to improve it. So after you've built it, you'll be troubleshooting. Oh, this didn't work, this fell off. I've got to make it look better. This will be the improving. You might have to go through this cycle quite a few times to get the wiggle bot that works best for you, or the scribble bot. So let's get started. Uh, you might like to pause the video while you put pen to paper and start thinking and um, working in this design process. This will help you get the best wiggle bot possible. All right, let's have a go at making one. Now, if you want, you can watch me make mine and then go ahead and make yours. Or you might like to turn the video off and just have a go and see what you can come up with and then have a look at what I've done. I'm thinking that I'm going to use these wire bits as legs. I'm going to use the big cog at the bottom. Now, the wire is pretty flexible, so you can bend it easily enough. I want you to take your time doing this because It'll involve some tweaking, some tinkering. I'm going to then just fold it back across through one of those little cog bits. So there, that looks about even, doesn't it? Like that. I'm going to put the other one in as well, same way. And I've got something that stands up. 
I'm going to pop a bit of dowel into that centerpiece and I might just use that little bit of soap and just rub on that. I need to attach the motor and I need to attach the battery and I need to have something that's going to spin around. See there's a little bit here so I could just pop that onto this end of the dowel. Now remember if any of your parts break or you lose any you're going to have to improvise. This is what happens when you're experimenting and making things. I'm thinking that I'm going to put my battery on one side like that. I might just use a bit of masking tape and I don't want it to fly off so I'm going to make it so that I loop with my tape, pop that on the bottom, stick that on there like that and then I'm also going to then stick some tape across the top of it to help it stay put. You might do something completely different to me, that's fine. Now my cables are going to have to connect into here so, so they don't get in the way I might even wind it around the post. I'm also going to put something on there so that spins around as well uh, and I might use this red one so I need to pop that on. So hold the base of your motor when you're pushing that on. I wonder if I need to move my battery over a little bit more and then it's easier for the alligator clips to clip on there and make connection with this silver part at the end of the battery case. Ah, there you go. So there's a connection. All right, so it's spinning, but it's not really doing anything. So what am I going to do to make it wiggle? Let's disconnect that. Oops, Oop, try and keep those cables off the spinny bit. I think we've got to make it look unbalanced. It's too balanced at the moment. Let's put something else up there to make it a bit more unbalanced. We have success, hooray! Here we go. So make sure if you're adding bits to the cogs that spin around, make sure they're wedged in so they don't fly off and hit somebody. Remember to disconnect. You've got to actually break the connection from the battery with your little leads here. I'm just thinking that I might now get some textures. Maybe I'll change my wheel bot to a scribble bot by putting some textures on there. Let's have a look. If I tape that onto there and then I take the lid off, it probably will be a different height. You know, in the whole process, you might be thinking about what looks good as well. So that's why I'm going to use this coloured bit of tape. So make sure you have a piece of paper underneath because as you saw before, it wiggles and it goes all over the place and we don't want to put texture marks all over your dinner table. Oh, here it goes. So, you know, I've got to really uh, make this a bit more stable, haven't I? I've probably got to put the textures on a bit stronger so they don't fall off, but I might make another one uh, just so you've got a few ideas about other things to do, other ways to do it. Once you've made one, you'll want to keep making them. I'm going to use a recycled cup first. If you've got a skewer at home, you could punch a hole that way into it, or you might ask a grown-up just to put a little hole in the end, okay, because we need to put a piece of dowel through there. Because I want this to be the body of my wheel bot this time. And look, that's wobbling around way too much, so I'm going to need to put a bit of tape on that. All right, so I've got my cup, which is going to be the body. I've got a post in there and I'm going to connect the motor to this post. Now what happened was with mine, because I pulled another bit apart, this little claspy bit actually broke. So I tried to stick it together and popped it in, but you know what? I can get away without using it. I can improvise. So I'm going to just tape this onto the post there. I want the spinning bit to be just a little bit above there. So let me just do that. All right, now I'm going to use some of these little bits. I'm going to use another piece of dowel. Maybe I'll use this little cog this time. I could put the battery on the top. I could put it at the side. I think if I have it that way, the cables might not quite reach. So I'm going to have it crossways. So I'm going to take that on. All 
All right, so it's sort of wobbling. It's not moving though, and it looks like it's going to fall over, doesn't it? So let's see. I have to tinker with this. What if I have the motor on the other side? That's better. I think I've got to make my robot look a bit more like a robot. So I'm just going to use a bit of tape because I've got this brown cut. I'm going to make this the front. Uh, and I think I might draw some eyes on it. And we might give a big happy smile. If I had some pipe cleaners or something, I could add some arms maybe. Now, every time you make one of these, it's gonna be different. I'm making it better now. This is the next step. Again, did you notice that I've got this all off centre so it sort of makes it wobble. If you wanted to, you could turn this into a scribble bot as well. So by taping some textures on the outside or you could um, put them on the inside even. Also, these little silver bits, you might find that you need to pull those out to help make a connection. Uh, if you've got a, a flat arm screwdriver, you can just pull it out with that a little bit if you find that it's not quite making that connection, but mine are working. Okay, so I hope you've had fun making your wheel bot or scribble bot, or maybe you've even made it like a really fast robot. There's lots of tinkering involved in this and it's really, really satisfying once you get the result and it's moving, it's so exciting. I'd love to see some of what you've made. We have a Facebook page, so if you'd like to ask your parents to send a photo, join the Facebook page and send a photo, that would be great. And we can share it and we can have a look and everybody else can see what you've made because I'm really keen to see what everybody out there's made. Okay, so have fun with your wiggle bots, scribble bots. Bye.